Okay, good morning everybody. Um, it's Mrs Garment here and I'm just going to have a um, quick few minutes with you just to share with you some advice about how you can plan your revision uh, timetable effectively. Um, so this is for parents as well really because I know that sometimes you might know, not know what the best way of planning a revision uh, timetable is and it's about supporting your child to make sure they make an effective plan an effective plan that will actually support their studies in school but actually that's feasible for your for your, your child to stick to so i've broken this down into a number of steps um these revision timetables are available at school for your um, child to take with you uh, with them sorry um tutors will have them um and also they should be um receiving one of these or a few of these through their assertive mentors so if you ha if they haven't got one then please um do encourage them to ask for one so really step one um if we're thinking about planning some revision um from from this point forwards really obviously it's going to look a little bit different as we get closer to the exam period so i've put on the at the top here sort of step one having a look at when are my most productive times. Um, so making sure that you're already factoring in um, some plans that you might already have. So I know that some students, um, for example, go to a club in the evening or they might want to spend an evening with friends or family um, and they have that commitment of going to school. So they need to make sure, first of all, they have a think about what are my plans already? So what are my weekly plans that mean that I can't revise in that time? Um, what are my most productive times? So for, for many pupils, obviously, it might be that when they get in from school, they are still quite, um, they're able to do some decent self-study at that point. So it might be that they dedicate an hour and a half after school, um, a few days a week to actually um, do some revision, which is great. It might be that some students work a little bit better if they're, they're working a little bit later. So they come in from school, they have a couple of hours to relax. They maybe have some dinner, but then they'll sit down to perhaps do some revision from seven to sort of half eight, nine o'clock at night. Um, so it's about when are the most productive times for that for that individual? And it will be different for everybody. Um, on a weekend, for example, some students might decide to have a couple of evenings off and not work at all at the weekend in the evenings. But actually, they might want to do a few hours each of the mornings at the weekend or it might be that they want a really nice lie-in at the weekend and they'll put in a couple of hours of self-study in the afternoon so really step one is when are your most productive times block out anything that you already have planned for that week so it might be that you do one week at a time um, or you have this plan for a couple of weeks and um, but it's important to block out those times so this is just an example so obviously school every day uh, Wednesday night they have foot this person has football training and then they're going to give themselves a Friday and a Sunday night off where they don't do any school work they just spend some time relaxing at home and um, once they've done that um once they've done that and they've blocked out that time I suppose step two really is around thinking about which subjects do I need to prioritize in the next two weeks so I've kind of um, planned these revision timetables just based on two weekly cycles. So every two weeks I'll revise what I'm going to do and it might change as the time goes on and as we approach the exam season. Um, so what which subjects do I need to prioritise? So for this person, um, they've decided that the most productive time for them is straight from school. So they've blocked out the time where they have things planned. Um, and they've decided that on a Monday, Tuesday and a Thursday, they're going to revise for two hours. Um, and it might be that then come six o'clock, they get to have the dinner and they've got the evening to themselves. But they have done a couple of productive hours of self-study. So for this for this particular pupil, it might be that the subjects that they're wanting to focus on more or prioritise more. English, maths and science, history and geography. They're the subjects that they feel they want to invest the most time in at this particular stage. So you just drop in. Four till five, we're going to be revising English on a Monday. Five till six, we're going to be looking at some science. And then on a four till five on a Tuesday is maths. Five till six on a Tuesday is history and so on. And you just drop in on a Saturday. For example, they're going to do three hours of revision, an hour of maths, an hour of geography and an hour of science. OK, at this stage in the year, I'd say that's a that's a decent amount. That's a, that's a good amount of revision to be doing at this stage. So I suppose the next stage then, once you've decided what subjects are your priority, the next stage really is to think about which specific topic areas you're going to revise for. So it's not just a case of I'm going to sit down and do an hour of English tonight. It's a case of, well, 
within that subject of English, what is it, which topic areas or which units of work do I not feel that confident with? Do I need to invest some time in? So I've given you an example here. So four till five every Monday, we're going to do some English revision. And actually, I'm going to focus on uh, the text that we're reading at the moment, which is Romeo and Juliet. So I'm going to do some Romeo and Juliet English revision at that time, making sure that during the day on Monday, if I need to go and speak to my English teacher, I've got all the revision resources that I need for that revision to be effective. At five till six, it might be that I'm going to revise science, but actually I know from my last assessment that ecology was a subject that I didn't do, a unit of work, sorry, that I didn't particularly do very well on. So actually I'm going to focus that hour on ecology. And you would do the same for all of the subjects, um, writing down what the subject is, but actually what the specific focus is going to be. Um, obviously, we've got a number of revision guides in school um, that they can be bought from the school shop, but you can also buy them online. Um, and I think it's really important that students take some initiative to speak to teachers. And if they do need, for example, past papers or if they need any flashcards or anything like that, we can support them with that in school. So I think this would be step three. So looking at specifically what subjects, how long for and then what particular unit of work they're going to focus on. And I would suggest that you probably have this planner, this revision plan for maybe two weeks. And then in two weeks time, you perhaps do another one that perhaps increases the amount of time invested in revision. And obviously, when we get to the Easter holidays, it might be that they well, we're hoping that they're spending a lot more time revising um, because that's a real um, lengthy period of time where students are not in school. So they're not restricted with having uh, this period of time here. OK, I hope that's helpful for everybody. Um, and um, this is the next video of the self-study for our students. And I will speak to you again soon.